الحمد لله العلي الأكرم الذي علم الإنسان بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Before I begin, I'd like to apologize, inshallah ta'ala, for arriving late. There was a bit of traffic on the way. Um, so I apologize for that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, without any further ado, we're going to be continuing with the kitab, Al-Urjuzatul Mi'iyya Fi Dhikri Hali Ashraf al Bariya, The 100 lines of poetry on the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah ta'ala, our brother will read and we'll continue with where we left off. Bidhnillahi ta'ala, tafadl. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ولشيخنا وللحاضرين ولجميع المسلمين الأحياء منهم الميتين قال الشيخ العلامة ابن أبي العز الحنفي رحمه الله تعالى في الأرجوزة المئية في ذكر في أرجوزة المئية في حال أشرف البارية الحمد لله القديم الباري ثم صلاته على المختار وبعدها كثيرة الرسول منظومة موجزة الفصول نعم. So we started in the first two lines of poetry. The author he mentioned and he started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said الحمد لله القدير الباري أو قديم الباري. All praise is due to Allah القديم الباري. The eternal and the one who created everyone. ثم صلاته على المختار. Then he sent salutations on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And we mentioned salutations is what? Is we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua or we ask making dua to Allah to praise the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in a higher gathering. And then he said على المختار. المختار is not a name of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. It's a Characteristic, and some say it's a laqab. He's the chosen one, and the only evidence to say that the Prophet is al mukhtar in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the closest is the Hadith of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah taala in his Musnad, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ana nabiyu al mujtaba." I am the Prophet al mujtaba, meaning the chosen one, which is the same as the word al mukhtar Then the author says, "Ha kasirat al rasuli." Here is the seerah, the life of the Prophet. Manzumat al mujazat al fusuli. It's a nadam, it's lines of poetry. Mujaza. It is summarized and it's in chapters and units. Naam. Tfadal akhir next one. Assalamualaikum. Mawliduhu fi aashir al fadili. Rabi'in al awwal aam al fili. The author then says, Mawliduhu fi aashir al fadili. The birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's where the author chose to start with. Now, in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a lot of the scholars they start from a point before this, before the birth of the Prophet. They discuss something else. Who knows where they start from? Good. Some of them this. Some of them from another point after that. Lineage and nesab. So, who is the Prophet that was born on the specific time and that day? So let's go into a bit more detail regarding the nasab, the family tree of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is our Prophet? What's his name? What's his father's name? Which tribe did he belong to? Who knows? Muhammad. Good, Ahsan. And which tribe is he from? Quraysh. Ahsan. Very good. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many names does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have? First discussion. How many names does the Prophet have? What's the first name and the common name of the Prophet? Muhammad. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does Muhammad mean? What does the name Muhammad mean? The praised one. So, the one that is most praised. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a few names. The first one of them is Muhammad. The scholars they mention who's the first person to give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this name is his grandfather Abdul Muttalib. And then the scholars also discuss an interesting fact which is 
Was there anyone in Arabia called Muhammad before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? No. There was. There were three people called Muhammad before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born. Interesting fact is, they mention why. Where did this name Muhammad come from? Of the three people that were called Muhammad before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was even born, they say. The parents of these three people, they went to Sham and they had discussions with the Christians at that time. And they knew from the Christians that there was going to be a prophet who was going to come and his name was either going to be Ahmed or Muhammad. So in hopes, and, and these three people that went to Sham, their wives were already pregnant in Mecca. So they, out of hoping that their son or the child that they have back home is going to be a prophet, they named their son Muhammad. That's how they got their name Muhammad. Otherwise, there was no one else called Muhammad except these three people in Arabia before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it's relatively a unique name. And the person who gave the Prophet this name is who? His grandfather Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib will go into him a bit more detail, but his grandfather gave him this name, and his name is called Muhammad. Why? لِكَثْرَةِ مَحَامِدِهِ because he's praised so often, number one. He's called Muhammad because he's oftenly praised or most oftenly praised, commonly praised. That's number one. The second one is because he has attributes of praise. Not because people are praising him often, but he has a lot of praiseworthy attributes. That's why he's called Muhammad. So there's different reasons why they mention he was called Muhammad and the meaning of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many times is the word Muhammad mentioned in the Qur'an? Three or four? Who says three? Raise your hand. Who says four times? Okay. Who knows all the four? No. The four times Muhammad is mentioned. Now, brothers, you, people know the the biography of football players today, huh? The name Muhammad, how many times it's mentioned in the Quran and which places we don't know, صح? Huh? That's one. That's Surah Al-Fatih. We mentioned it. That's... Huh? Last one. Okay, so that's Muhammad. <laughs> Second verse, right? Uh, what's the ayah? Al-Ladina kafaru wa saddu an sabili lillahi adalla amanu al-Ladina amanu amnu al-salihati wa amanu bima nuzzila ala Muhammadin wa huwa al-haqq min Rabbihim. Muhammad. These three places. Surah Ali Amran, Surah Al-Hisab, Surah Muhammad and Surah Al-Fatih. Four times. The fifth time is where is mentioned as Ahmed, not Muhammad. So Muhammad was mentioned four times and Ahmed was mentioned one time in the Quran. And all of them are the names of the Prophet. Muhammad is the name of the Prophet and Ahmed is the name of the Prophet. What does Muhammad mean? We mentioned it. What does Ahmed mean? Ahmed, they say, Ahmedu al Hamidina lillah is the one who praises Allah the most. Ahmed is called Sigatu at tafdil It's the one that praises Allah the most. So Ahmed means he's the one who's praising Allah the most. Muhammad means what? He himself is being praised by other people. Does it make sense? So these are the two names of the Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad and Ahmed. Both were mentioned in the Quran. Are there any other names of the Prophet besides Ahmed and Muhammad? Yes. Who can give me some other names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Al Muqaffi, Al Aqib, Rasti, Inshallah, Ahsant. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has other names. And the other names are mentioned in the Sunnah, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll take some of these names, Inshallah Ta'ala. Before that, there are certain names that are mentioned in the Qur'an that are not from the names of the Prophet, but people think it is. And some scholars have mentioned it. 
From it is Taha. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana litashqa. They say Taha is referring to the Prophet. It's a name of the Prophet. Is it? No, the correct opinion is Taha is not a name of the Prophet. Some scholars, they say Yaseen, Surah Yaseen is the name of the Prophet. It's not a name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are other names of the Prophet mentioned in the Sunnah. From it is number one. Write it down. Al-Mahi. Al-Mahi. Al-Mahi is a name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does it mean? It means Yamhu Allahu bihil kufr. Allah eradicates disbelief with the Prophet. So Al-Mahi means the eradicator. Eradicator of what? Disbelief. That's the third name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number four. Al-Hashir. Al-Hashir. Al-Hashir comes from the word Al-Hashir, which means resurrection. They say because everybody is going to be resurrected at the feet of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does that mean? Everybody is resurrected at the feet of the Prophet. The scholars give it two meanings. The first one is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the first person to be resurrected. Everyone, when we come out of our graves, who is the first one who is going to come out? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore, he's called Al-Hashir. Another meaning of Al-Hashir, they say, people will gather at the feet of the Prophet on the Day of Judgment. When? Al-Shafa'atul Udma. When everybody is going to come and we want the Day of Judgment to start, we go to the different Prophets. Everybody is eventually gathered where? At the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore, he's called Al-Hashir. That's which name? Number four. Number five. Al-Aqib. Al-Aqib. Al-Aqib means the one that comes at the end. And it means the one الذي ليس بعده نبي. The one that there is no prophet after the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's true. There is no one after the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So another name of the prophet is Al-Aqib. That's number five. Number six is Al-Muqaffi. Al Muqaffi. It is the one that is Yaqfu Al Nabiyin. He's the one who comes at the end. So it's similar to the meaning of Al Aqib, the one that comes at the end. So the last of all of the Prophets, Al Muqaffi. And there's other names of the Prophet. He's called Nabi Tawbah, the Prophet of Repentance, Mercy, uh, Repentance. Nabiul Rahma, the Prophet of Rahma, mercy, and Nabiul Malhama, some scholars say, the Prophet of Al Malhama, the great fighting. So these are all the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad, Ahmed, Al Hashir, Al Aqib, Al Muqaffi, Al Mahi, Nabiul Tawbah, Nabiul Rahma, Nabiul Malhama. These are the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everybody with me? Good. Any questions? You missed one? Yeah? Al-Amin. It's not a name. It's a title of the Prophet. Al-Sadiq Al-Amin is a title. The one that is, I don't know how to say it in English. It comes from the word Al-Hashar, which means people are resurrected next to the Prophet. So they meaning that come to the Prophet. Or the Prophet Sallallahu is the first one to be resurrected. So this comes from the word resurrection, al-hashr. Yes. Al-hashr, yeah, uh, So it's uh, the gather, gatherer. Sah, that's a good translation. The, the, they gather at his feet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not at his feet literally, but meaning where the Prophet is. So these are the names of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does the Prophet have a kunya, a nickname? So like some people have Abu such and such, Abu such and such. The father of such and such. Does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have a nickname? Abu Al-Qasim. Based on what? His son, Ahsan. Al-Qasim. So Abu Al-Qasim, the father of Al-Qasim. His son was called Al-Qasim. So the Prophet was called Abu Al-Qasim, the father of Al-Qasim. Side benefit. The son of the Prophet, is he called Qasim or Al-Qasim? Al-Qasim, with the Alif Lam. So Alif Lam is a part of his name. What is it called, this Alif Lam? We mentioned it before. 
Alif Lam. Huh? Al Zaida. It's a part of the name. Like Al Harith. Al Abbas. Al Qasim. Here, this is a part of the name. So Alif Lam here is a part of the name. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's son, is he called Qasim? Or Al Qasim? Al Qasim. With the Alif Lam. Not for the so it's not a name, but it's an attribute of the Prophet. He's the chosen one. So it's not a name, but it's an attribute. And we mentioned in the beginning, it's called Al-Mustafa or Al-Mujtaba. Same meaning as well. Okay, so his nickname is Abul Qasim. And the Prophet ﷺ, he consented to this nickname, this kunya. Where? In the hadith of Abi Hurairah. The Prophet ﷺ, when Abu Hurairah, he mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited the fasting of Yom Ashak, the day of doubt in Ramadan in the beginning. And then he said, Whoever has done so, Faqad Asa Abul Qasim. He's disobeyed the Prophet. So Abu Huraira referred to the Prophet as what? Abul Qasim. Abul Qasim. Okay? So that's the nickname of the Prophet. Does the Prophet have a title? You mentioned one, right? What is it? Al Amin. And? Al-Sadiq. Al-Sadiq and Al-Amin. These are titles of the Prophet that he was known for. Is there any other title of the Prophet? Besides Al-Sadiq and Al-Amin? Al-Mahdina. Title. Yeah. Huh? Rasulullah, Nabiullah, all of these are titles of the Prophet. Other than those ones. Because those are known. Sah. He's also known as Sayyidu Waladi Adam. He's a master of the children of Adam. That's a title of the Prophet. The master of the children of Adam. Sayyidu Waladi Adam. The Prophet ﷺ himself said it. Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adam wala fakhr. I am the master of the children of Adam and I'm not even being boastful. Master means here what? The best of the children of Adam. Is who? The Prophet ﷺ. So another one is what? Sayyidu Waladi Adam. A side benefit. Are we allowed to call the Prophet Sayyid? So do we say you say it or you don't say it? So we can't call the Prophet Sayyidu Waladi Adam, or can we? There's a discussion amongst the scholars, khilaf, difference of opinion. A group of scholars, they say you cannot use the word Sayyid for the Prophet. And from them is Imam Malik. He said it's haram, it's prohibited. Why? Because there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when a delegation came to the Prophet, the waft of Bani Amir, and then they said to the Prophet, Anta Sayyiduna, Wabn Sayyidina, you are our master, and you are the child of our master. What did the Prophet say to them? As Sayyidullah, Allah is a Sayyid. Don't say to me as Sayyid. What did the Prophet say? Allah is a Sayyid. And then, as a result, Imam Malik takes the opinion, it's haram for you to call the Prophet Sayyid. Another group of scholars, they say it's allowed. Why? Because the rest of the hadith, the Prophet said what? Say a part of your speech. So the Prophet didn't say, don't say it. The Prophet said, say some of what you said. Because they started to praise the Prophet. You are our master. You're the best one of us. you this, you this. Then what did the Prophet say? Allah is a Sayyid. Say some of your speech. Let shaitan not drag you and take you somewhere where your ideas and thoughts can go misled. So the Prophet prohibited them. So a group of scholars say it's not allowed, and a group of scholars, they say, it is allowed unrestrictedly. The correct opinion is it is allowed for the Prophet fi al ibadah when it's not in ibadah, not in acts of worship. So for example, if somebody is making the adhan, and they say, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad, and then instead of saying Muhammad, they say Sayyidun, Sayyidina Muhammad. Are they allowed to say it in the Adhan? No. In the Adhan, they're not allowed to use the word Sayyid for the Prophet. Generally, you can say, yes, the Prophet is Sayyid wa the Adam, no problem. In the Adhan, you're not allowed to. In the Tashahud, when you do it, the Durud, you're not allowed to say Sayyid. In the Khutbatul Haja, 
Allah wa salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You're not allowed to because it's ibadah. So if you're ghayr al-ibadah, you can. In ibadah, you restrict your usage of the word how the Prophet mentioned it. You just say Muhammad. Okay? And that's the balanced opinion, insha'Allah ta'ala. There is a khilaf amongst the scholars. Can you call other people Sayyid? He is our Sayyid. He's our master. Huh? The Prophet we discussed. And the Prophet, in ibadah, you cannot. Other than ibadah, yes, you can say the Prophet is Sayyid Walidi Adam. For the human beings, other rest of us. You sure? You can't say it for the Prophet, you can't say it for anyone else. We said you can for the Prophet. So the Prophet did use it for other people, right? And Sa'ad ibn, Abi Mu Sa ibn Mu'ad, when he came and the Prophet get appointed him for the Jews, I think it was Bani Quraidah, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Qumu li Sayyidikum. Stand up for your Sayyid. The Prophet referred to another companion as a Sayyid. So you're allowed to use the word Sayyid for somebody who's deserving of it. Like you would use the title of uh, grander. Like for somebody who says, he's, he, he's our master, he's our leader. You're allowed to say that, no problem. As long as they deserve it. As long as they deserve it. So uh, that's side benefit, inshallah ta'ala. So the title of the Prophet is what? Sayyidu Waladi Adam. The Prophet Sallallahu name is Muhammad. What is his father's name? His father is Abdillahi. So the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as our brother mentioned, Barakallahu Fihim, goes back to Adnan. And you write it down. Knowing this lineage of the Prophet is important. What I'm about to give you is the lineage of the Prophet up to Adnan. This is agreed upon. There is no khilaf. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Muhammad. His father is Abdillahi. His grandfather is Abdul Muttalib, great grandfather Hashim, then Abdi Manaf, then Qusay, then Kilab, then Murrah, then Kaab. Have I lost you guys? Should I go slower? Okay, one by one. Muhammad is his name. His father is what? Abdullah. His grandfather? Abdul Muttalib. His great grandfather, Hashim. After that, Abdi Manaf. Then, Qusay. Then, Kilab. Then, Murrah. Then, Kaab. You with me? Then, Luay. Then, Ghalib. Then, Fihr. Then, Malik. Then, Anadr. Then, Kinana, then Khuzayma, then Mudrika, then Ilyas, then Mudar, then Nizar, then Ma'ad, then Adnan. Some of the brothers looking at me like they're lost <laughs> when I said the fourth, huh? Shall I repeat? Can I repeat one more time? If you lose it now, go back to the recording, inshallah. Let's start. Abdullah, let's say Muhammad. Then Abdullah, then Abdul Muttalib, then Hashim, then Qusay, Abdul Manaf, عفواً. Abdul Manaf, then Qusay, then Kilab, then Murra, then Kaab, then Luay, then Ghalib, then Fihr, then Malik, then Anadr, then Kinana, then Khuzayma, then Mudrika, then Ilyas, then Mudar, then Nizar, then Ma'ad, then Adnan. How many are these? 20. And including the Prophet it is? 21. صح? With the Prophet it is 21. Without the Prophet it is? 20. This chain all the way back to Adnan is agreed upon. No khilaf amongst the scholars. Then from Adnan to Ibrahim alayhi salam or Ismail and Ibrahim, there is what the scholars call al-arjah, is the most correct opinion. And then you have 
a number of names all the way back to Ismail and Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then from Ibrahim and Ismail all the way back to Adam alayhi salam, there is a khilaf. So the lineage of the Prophet is three types. There's one that is agreed upon. Another one, the most correct opinion, is that. And it's very strong. And then there's a khilaf. The first one that is no difference of opinion is lineage back to who? Adnan. The one that there is strong opinion on. This is very likely that's the name of the Prophet is what? All the way back to Ismail and Ibrahim. Again, the difference is not whether the Prophet goes back to Ismail and Ibrahim or not. There is no agreement, disagreement on that. The disagreement is the names in the middle. Okay? For example, some of the names is Ibn Ud, Ibn Adad. These names that come in the middle, there is a difference of opinion. Then from Ibrahim alayhi salam to Adam alayhi salam, there is a khilaf. And the total amount of chain between the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and Adam alayhi salam, there is even a khilaf there. How long is it? The longest is, it is 40 names in the middle. From the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam up to Adam alayhi salam, there's 40 names in the middle. And you can go back to different books of scholars where they mention all of these names, insha'Allah ta'ala. So, let's go back to the lineage of the Prophet that is agreed upon and let's discover some of these names, insha'Allah ta'ala. The first one after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is who? Abdullah, his father. His father's name is Abdullah. He is the son of Abdul Muttalib. Does anybody know any other brothers of Abdullah? Hamza, Al Abbas, Abu Talib, Abu Talib, yes. Yeah, somebody said another name. Abu, Abu Lahab. Good. He's also an uncle of the Prophet. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had many uncles and aunties. Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet, married eleven women. This is before Islam. So he had many children. From them is who? Abdullah, the father of the Prophet ﷺ. Does the Prophet have any bro uh, paternal uncles? So from his father's side, uncles from his father's side, from the same brother as Abdullah. Same mother, same father. Huh? No, Hamza, is a, Hamza radiallahu anhu, is a different mother. Same father. From Abdul Muttalib, but different mother. No, Al Abbas is from a different mother as well. This is lineage of the Prophet, huh? You should know this. So there is Abu Talib. Abu Talib and Abdullah, they are from the same mother, same father. Okay, and from them is also another a brother called Az Zubair, or uncle called Az Zubair. This is not Az Zubair ibn Awam, this is another Az Zubair. Ibn Abd al-Muttalib, Az-Zubair, Abu Talib, and Abdullah, the father of the Prophet, they have the same mother and same father. Clear? Okay. Abdullah, when was he born? The scholars have a khilaf. He was born, they say, 25 years before the year of the elephant. 25 years before the qissa of Al-Fil. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-Fil. Before that incident happened, 25 years before it, the father of the Prophet Abdullah was born. Okay? And when the Prophet ﷺ, he was born, how old or, or how old was the Prophet when his father died? Six years? Three years. And then his father died. You sure? After his birth. Khilaf, difference of opinion. A group of scholars say before the Prophet was even born, his father died. Some scholars say the Prophet ﷺ was two months in the womb of his mother, then his father died. Khilaf. Definitely nobody says more than one year. It's all below one year. So a few months. The correct opinion, and Allah knows best, he was two months. Then his father, ﷺ's father, he died. Abu Talib, he loved the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a lot. Abu Talib, uh, so Afun, Abdullahi, he loved his son Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a lot. Abdullahi, he was traveling for business 
and he was going to Sham. On the way, he stopped at Medina in Adar of Banu Najjar from the relatives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He couldn't continue. They say Abdullah, the father of the Prophet, was very, very physically strong. He's physically very strong. He became sick, and instead of continuing his journey to Asham, he stopped in Medina. And then the news reached Abdul Muttalib, the father of the Prophet Sallallahu father, which is the grandfather of the Prophet. Abdul Muttalib, his news reached him that the caravan returned. He's looking for who? He's expecting Abdullahi, his son. Abdullah is not there. He says, where's my son? He went with the caravan with you. They say he fell sick. Or they said to him, he fell sick and he's staying in Medina. He never came to it in the trip. So he got very worried because he was very strong. And if he got sick, that means something is very serious. Only a few days passed and then Abdullah, he died. So the Prophet Sallallahu father died where? al Medina. He was buried in a place called Dar al Nabigha. Dar al Nabigha, which is a place and a, and a residence of the family of Banu Najjar from the relatives of the Prophet. Dar al Nabigha today is very close to the Prophet Sallallahu masjid. It's in fact a part of the masjid. It's one of the water coolers outside, they say. Uh, there is where Dar al Nabigha is. So this is the father of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another issue. The father of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he die as a Muslim? Uh, or a non-Muslim? Disbeliever. What's your evidence? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Absent. Absent. Very good. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man came to him. He said, where is my father? Aina Abi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Abaka fin nar. Your father is in the hellfire. Again, this is knowledge that Allah gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As the man was walking away from the masjid, he felt very sad and upset because his father is in the hellfire. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him back. He said, Inna Abi wa abaka fin nar. My father and your father are both in the hellfire. So that's a clear statement from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying his own father is in the hellfire. And this doesn't bring down the status of the Prophet in any way, shape or form. Great men of Allah, Prophets, their family members were not Muslim and they died as disbelievers. Like Ibrahim Alayhi Salam's father, Nuh Alayhi Salam's son, Lut Alayhi Salam his wife. They're disbelievers. This did not reduce the status of these great men. And this, if anything, shows you what? Guidance is in the hands of Allah and not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the correct opinion is the father of the Prophet died as a non-Muslim. It is a disbeliever. The next person in the chain is who? Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is the great, or is the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is his name? His name is not Abdul Muttalib. What's his name? Huh? Shayba. His name is Shayba. And some say Shayba al-Hamd. Shayba means what? His hair turning, like me, huh? hair turning white. That's called Shayb. Uh, Shaybu is not Shayb fil. Let's say Shaybu. Shaybu fil Sha'ar. Shayb is not Shayb, is getting old here. We can Shaybu fil Himami. It's when you're weak. In any case, Shayb is what? Shaybat al-Hamd is the name of the grandfather of the Prophet. Why was he called Shaybat al-Hamd? He, did he have gray hair? Yes, some of the scholars, they say he was born with gray hair. He was born with gray hair, so they called him Shayba from young age. Some of them, they say, later in his life, he travels a long distance from Medina to Mecca. And therefore, through this journey, his hair turned white or gray. Then he was called Shayba. In any case... His name was Shaybat al-Hamd. It was not Abdul Muttalib. Why was he then called Abdul Muttalib? Now the grandfather of the Prophet was called Abdul Muttalib because of the great grandfather of, Abdul, of the Prophet. There were two great grandfathers of the Prophet, brothers, Hashim and Al-Muttalib. Hashim and Al-Muttalib are the two sons from the four sons of Abdi Manaf. Let's go back. Abdul Manaf, Abdi Manaf, he had how many sons? Four. Write it down. The great-grandfather of the Prophet had four sons. Sorry. The great-great-grandfather. 
of the Prophet had four sons. Number one, Abdul Muttalib, the great grandfather of the Prophet, had four sons. Number one, Abdul Muttalib. Sorry, no, the great grandfather of the Prophet had four. The great great grandfather, two greats, of the Prophet had four sons. So Abdul Manaf had four sons: Al Muttalib, Hashim, Abdul Shams, and Nawfal. These were the four sons of Abdul Manaf. Abdul Manaf is who? The great great grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdul Muttalib. Uh, sorry, Al Muttalib and Hashim were what? Brothers. Who's the third brother? Abdul Shams and the fourth? Nawfal. In this story, Al Muttalib and Hashim are involved. Hashim, who is the Prophet Wasallam's great great grandfather, so great grandfather, he lived in Mecca, Medina. And so he lived in Mecca. Hashim, his real name was Amr. Amr al Ula, they say. His name was Amr. Amr was traveling to Sham, and they say he was the first and will come to who Hashim is and why was he called Hashim and his significance. But Hashim, he was traveling from Mecca to Asham. In the way, on the way, he stops in Medina. And he marries a woman called Salma from the tribe of Adi ibn Najjar. So he marries a woman called Salma in the way. He stops there, he marries a woman, and then he makes his way to Asham for trading. On the way to Sham, he informs his brother in Mecca, I have married a woman called Salma, and I have a son. If anything happens to me, take care of my children or my son. So he goes to Sham. Who is this? Hashim. Hashim dies whilst he's in Sham. They say he died in Gaza, in Palestine today. So he died in Palestine. Hashim. So when he died, Al Muttalib travels from Mecca to Medina to go and take care of the children he's left behind, which is Shaiba, the grandfather of the Prophet. He arrives there. Selma is with his, with the son. So this is his nephew. He says, "Give me my nephew, and I will take him back to Mecca. I will take care of my nephew." In Mecca, we have a family, we have a tribe, we're good. Here, nobody knows him in Medina. He'll be you get lost and you'll be weak. The mother being a mother, she didn't want him to go. After convincing, convincing, some say a week of convincing, some say a month of convincing, she was finally convinced. She gave her son, whose name was what? Shayba, to Al-Muttalib, the brother of Hashim, to take back to Mecca. As Al-Muttalib is taking Shayba, which is the son of his brother, his nephew, back to Mecca, he was bringing him back. This is where I mentioned, that's where he said his hair turned white. It was called Shaiba. As he was coming back, nobody knew Al-Muttalib to have any children at that point. So they said and they thought, this is a slave Al-Muttalib bought. So they called him Abdul Muttalib. Does everybody understand? So that's how the name Abdul Muttalib came. His real name is what? Shaiba. It's not Abdul Muttalib. Does everybody understand? Shall I repeat? Shall I test you guys? Uh, Abdul Manaf, how many sons did he have? Four. Who are they? Without looking. Al, huh? Al Muttalib, Hashim, huh? Nawfal, Abdul Shams. Abdul Shams, by the way, who comes from there? Uthman ibn Affan comes from Abdul Shams. Okay, these are four. Then Hashim and Al Muttalib, what happens between them? Hashim and Al Muttalib, what happens between them? Hashim is traveling where? To Asham. Uh, he marries a woman called Selma. He gives birth to a Shaiba, a son called Shaiba. He dies where? Hashim. Gaza in Sham. And then he gave a wasiyah, a advice take care of my children to his brother Al Muttalib. Al Muttalib, when he realizes my brother has died, he travels to Medina, takes his son after the permission and the convincing, and brings him back where? Mecca. And as he's bringing him back, what do the people say? Abdul Muttalib. He's the slave of Al Muttalib. They didn't realize he is his nephew. Make sense? That is 
the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his name was what? Shayba. Shayba. The grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he also has a story and the story of finding the well of Zamzam. Zamzam, this well of Zamzam, who or where did it come about? Where did the well of Zamzam come about? When did it start? Whose time? Hajar alayhi salam. Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's where it came about and we know the famous story. The well came out, they were searching for water. The water came out. The Kaaba after uh, being in the control of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam at that point, then came the tribe of Jurhum. Jurhum was a tribe originally from Yemen. They took care of the Kaaba and they say they're the first caretakers of the Kaaba. But at one point they decided we don't want to take care of the Kaaba, we want to go back to our roots in Yemen. So they looted every wealth that was around the Kaaba and everything they took it away. So all the wealth that Ibrahim salam gathered and put next to the Kaaba, they say, they took all of this wealth with them. And Zamzam, they hid it. They broke down and they cleared out the remnants of Zamzam such that nobody knew where Zamzam was. So then Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet wasallam, one day he goes to sleep. And his mission was, I want to find Zamzam. And I want to find this well, so Quraysh can find water and we can drink. One day he goes to sleep. In his sleep, he sees, some say an angel, some say a man came, come to him. And he says to him, Uhfur Tayba. Dig Tayba. Abdul Muttalib says, what is Tayba? The angel goes or the man goes away. The next day he sleeps again, he has the same dream. The man comes to him and he says, dig, but this time he says, Barra. Dig barra. It doesn't mean outside. It means dig something, barra. And then he says, what is barra? The man goes away. The third day he says, dig madmuna. Dig madmuna. He says, what is madmuna? And the man or the angel goes away. The fourth day the angel comes in his dream again and he says, dig zamzam. Dig zamzam. And then the angel this time when he says, what is zamzam? The angel doesn't go away. The angel tells him where zamzam is. He woke up. He went to the exact place where the angel told him. He dug it. He found Zamzam. Another story of Zamzam is related to it. Abdul Muttalib made an oath with, the, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made a promise to himself. He said, Oh Allah, if you allow me to find Zamzam, I am going to sacrifice one of my children for you. Abdul Muttalib had how many children? Ten children, they say. And he had how many wives? Eleven. And some say he had more than ten children. The Prophet uh, Abdul Muttalib, so he said, I'm going to sacrifice one of my male children if Allah allows me to find Zamzam. Did he find Zamzam? He did find Zamzam. How? The story we mentioned. He has to sacrifice. So he said, I can't sacrifice like that. I have to choose. So he did what is known as Qur'a. He did that. But in his own version. So he did Qur'a. He, he drew lots. He picked a name. And he came out to be Abdullah, the father of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdullah, as we said to Abdul Muttalib, was very beloved. He did not want to sacrifice Abdullah, the father of the Prophet. So he said, instead of sacrificing my son Abdullah, I'm going to sacrifice ten camels instead. He sacrificed ten, gave the food away to the people. Then he said, let me try again. The same name came, Abdullah, the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten, ten times. Abdullah, Abdullah's name came. So how many camels did he sacrifice? 100 camels. So 10 times 10 is 100. And then the 11th time, somebody else's name came, they say. And some say he didn't do it after that. In any case, this 100 camel became later on as the blood money, the diya. And this is something that was found before Islam and the Sharia came and confirmed it. And that's why today blood money, if you kill somebody's and take their life unjustly in the Sharia, how much money do you have to pay back, blood money? 100 camels worth. And how much is one camel worth? This is very, very, very expensive. Let's put it this way. One camel is very expensive. You have to give 100 camels as blood money. Again, that's generally. There are some cases where you, it's a bit different. So, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, An ibn al-Dabihayn. I am the son of the two slaughtered people. Who are they? Number one, Abdullahi. The other one is who? Ismail alayhi salam, the son of Ibrahim. 
Remember, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he slaughtered his son, or he attempted to slaughter his son by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah replaced it with an animal. And as a result, what do we do today? The sunnah of udhiyah. In Eid, we slaughter the animal, right? the sheep and the camel. So the Prophet said, I'm the son of the two people that were meant to be slaughtered. None of them became slaughtered, but they were meant to be slaughtered. Going back. Abdullah, we mentioned. Abdul Muttalib, we mentioned, and he found Zamzam. And later we'll see the story of Abdullah when he comes to the Waqi'atu Al Fil, when he discusses and he has a discussion with Abraha, the person who came to destroy the Kaaba on the elephants. So that is Abdul, Abdul Muttalib. After Abdul Muttalib is who? Hashim. Hashim is who? The father of, the real father of Abdul Muttalib. His name is Hashim. Hashim's real name is Amr, as we mentioned. His name is Amr. Where is he buried? Gaza, in Sham today, they say. And Hashim, his name comes from the word Hashim. Hashim kana yahshim al-thareed. They say Hashim, this uh, ancestor of the Prophet wasallam, he would take what is known as Thareed. Thareed is meat soup with broth. Meat soup with broth. And they sometimes put bread inside it. To put the bread inside it, you have to break down the bread. So Hashim would break down the bread, Yahshim al-Thareed, and he would put it in the soup and he would give it to the people. So that's why he was called Hashim. His real name is not Hashim. What is it? Amr. And then he would put this food for the people around the Kaaba to eat for free. And he would also put dates and raisins there for the people to eat. And he would give them very any water. He would place it in a direction where the wind comes, it's cold, then people can drink it. So they say he was a very generous man. And he was well known and he was called Hashim. And this is, his real name is what? Amr. His real name is Amr. And they say he's the first person to bring about Rahlat al shita wa Saif. The journey of al shita wa Saif. He's the first one to do it. Which is traveling in the heat where? To a colder place like a sham. In the cold to a warmer place like Yemen they say. So they... Ashita was safe. So in winter and summer, he would do the journeys. He's the first one to start it. Who is it? Hashim. Then he comes who? Abdi Manaf. Abdi Manaf, what's his name? His name is not Abdi Manaf. His real name is Al Mughira. His real name is Al Mughira. How many sons did he have? Four Al Muttalib, Nawfal, Abdi Shams, and Hashim. These are the four sons of. Abd, Abd Manaf. Then, Abd Manaf's father is who? Qusay. His father is Qusay. Qusay, his real name is Zayd, they say. And Zayd had many children from them as Abd Manaf. From them is someone called Abd Dar. From them is Abd al Uzza. These were the sons of Qusay. Then comes Kilab. Then comes Murrah. And then comes. Uh, Ka'ab, then comes Lu'ay, then Ghalib, and then Fihr. In this chain, going back to Adnan, we say the Prophet is from who? He's the son of Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib, Abd Manaf, Ibn Hashim, wa Hashim min Quraysh, wa Quraysh min al Arab. Who is Quraysh in this whole chain? Who's Quraysh? We said the Prophet is from Quraysh eventually, right? Who's Quraysh? Khilaf. So he's one of the people between the Prophet and Adnan. And there's a Khilaf. And there are different opinions. The first opinion is Fihr. Fihr is Quraysh. This man in the chain called Fihr, he is Quraysh. And this is the opinion of a lot of the people of An Nasab, those who f- they follow the chain of the, uh, the lineages. They say Fihr is Quraysh. That's the first opinion. The second opinion is they say An Nadar, who is the person. Two before al fihr They say Al-Nadr is Quraysh. And that's the opinion of a lot of the muhaqqiqun. And then the third opinion is they say Ilyas. Ilyas is Quraysh. And the fourth opinion is, they say, is Mudar. Which is much closer to Adnan. He is Quraysh. And that is the opinion of some of the Shafi'iyya. And Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَهُوَ غَرِيبٌ This is a strange opinion. Because that's really far. 
So the correct opinion, and Allah knows best, we go with the opinion of the experts who are the people of Nasab, is Fihr. Fihr is Quraysh. So Quraysh is the name of who? Fihr. Okay? And this is going back to the uh, Prophet Sallallahu chain. Inshallah ta'ala, we don't want to go into too much details regarding it. Hope that is enough. So let's see if you guys remember anything now. What's the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yeah? Brothers, the name of the Prophet? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's another name of the Prophet? Ahmed, another name. Huh? Al-Hashir, another name. Al-Mahi. Al-Aqib, another one. Al-Muqaffi, another one. Nabiyu al-Malhamma, Nabiyu Tawbah, Nabiyu Rahma. These are names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Good. The name Ahmed, what does it mean? The one who praises Allah the most. Muhammad. The one who is praised, himself is praised the most, or the one who possesses qualities of praise the most. Good. Hashar, what does it mean? On the Day of Judgment, people will gather to him. Good. And also, what else does it mean? He's the first one to be resurrected. Good. The father of the Prophet is called what? Abdullah. Did he die as a Muslim or a non-Muslim? Non-Muslim. The father of the Prophet had other brothers. Who can name me a brother of Abdullah? Huh? Hamza. Who else? Al-Abbas. Abu Lahab. Someone from the same mother and the same father as Abdullah. Abu Talib. And? Az Zubair, good. Um, then comes who? Abdul Manaf? Abdul Muttalib, good. I'm testing you guys. Abdul Muttalib, what's his real name? Shayba. Why was he given the name of Shayba? Two reasons. Number one, he was born with gray hair. Number two, the journey made him have gray hair. Why was he called Abdul Muttalib if his real name is Shayba? Why would he call Abdul Muttalib, the slave of Muttalib? And he was bringing him from where? He was bringing Shayba from where? Medina to Mecca. Why? Because the father of Shayba had died. The father of Shayba is who? Hashim. Hashim's real name is? Amr. Why was he called Hashim? And he would break it down, and that's called Hashim. Good. Uh, and Hashim was known to do what? He was the first one to do what? Journey of the summer and the winter time. Good. What's before Hashim? Abdi Manaf. Abdi Manaf. Abdi Manaf had how many children? Four. Good. Abdi Manaf's real name? Al Mughira. Uh, before Abdi Manaf is who? Qusay. What's his real name? Zaid. Okay, Jamil. This is enough, inshallah ta'ala. What's, what you need to know from the lineage of the Prophet is what? Minimum for every Muslim is what? Muhammad. Mustahab, really, really, you should know, really, up to at least Abdi, Manaf. And then you say Quraysh, and Quraysh is from uh, the Arabs. That's not a problem, inshallah ta'ala. How much time do you have? Seven, five minutes. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll stop here for now. The next lesson will take the birth of the Prophet and we'll see the discussion around when was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam born, which year, which day, which month. We'll see that next week, inshallah ta'ala. Does anybody have any questions? Tadakh. There is, there is an argument there uh, from the scholars that mention the argument is Muhammad Amin al Shanqiti, rahimahullah ta'ala. He really strengthens that opinion. That when the Prophet said, Inna abi wa abaka finar, my father and your father is in the hellfire, he didn't mean my father. He meant my uncle because the Arabs use the word ab to mean uncle. And they say he was referring to Abu Talib. There's an argument there, yes. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin al Shanqiti, rahimahullah ta'ala, he strengthens that opinion. He brings adilla and evidences, shawahid min lughat al-Arab, from the speech of the Arabs. Uh, again, 
if the Prophet wanted to say Abu Talib, he would have said Abu Talib, and he would have said uncle. Um, and it's a direct speech of the Prophet. It doesn't hold any other possibility. And Allah knows best. Again, there's a khilaf, but it's very strong that it's the Prophet Sallallahu meant his father. And again, the argument is the man, if you look at the context, the man came and said what? Abi. When the man said my father, what did he mean? His father. He didn't mean my uncle. And then the Prophet said what? My father and your father. So he went what? My father. He didn't say my father. Your father and my uncle. It's ba'id. Sah? Allahu alam. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we know how Allah, so her, his, her mother is called Amina. We'll come to it in the next section, inshallah ta'ala, because the rest of the section where it deals with the breastfeeding of the Prophet, we'll discuss the mother of the Prophet. Her name is Amina binti Wahbin. What do you mean? Uh, the khilaf regarding the father of the Prophet is less. The khilaf regarding the mother of the Prophet is more. Meaning there is a strong opinion that says the mother of the Prophet is in Jannah. She's not in the hellfire. Again, they say this is before Ba'tha, before Islam. So he's not, some say he's not a Muslim and some say Allahu Alam. We stop. We don't. Abdul Muttalib, yeah. We don't know. There's a khilaf. No, because the Prophet Sallallahu they say his father, he came at a time where he had some knowledge. The knowledge reached him. For example, the remnants of the people of uh, the Jews and the Christians who were mentioning there is going to come a prophet. And they say the father of the prophet, he rejected that. So because of that. Yes, because the prophet is in his mother's womb, so he's not really going to accept Islam that we know of today. So they say that. Allah alam, there's a khilaf. Again, a lot of these things we don't have concrete evidence for. So we just say Allahu alam, tafadakhi. It was whatever is in the ibadah. So when you send salutations on the Prophet, you say Muhammad. That's it. You can't say, Allahumma salli ala Ahmad in salah. And you can't. Because the qa'idah is what? Ibadah is tawqifiyya. Ibadah, we do it like the Prophet told us. We don't change. Last question. I've got one question from the sisters. Sallallahu alayhi wa Can you name your child Sayyid? Sayyid. Allahu alam. I don't know. Is it a name or is it a title today? If it's a title, then there's a question mark. If it's a name and people use it and it has no bad meaning, yes. The asal of naming your children is you can name anything, inshallah ta'ala. And Allah knows best. Abd is Sayyid? What is mean Abd? Abd is Sayyid? No, no. Abd, you cannot say as Sayyid. No, no, no. When it comes to Abd, you can only say to the names of Allah. Yeah. It's not allowed, yes. But then why did the Prophet mention it? We'll come to it, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah. Again, the Prophet never initiated. The never, Prophet never said, I'm going to name my grandfather Abdul Muttalib. He was called Abdul Muttalib already. And the Prophet would say it in his battle. Ana, ana nabiyu la kadib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. Then the Prophet would march in battle. He would say, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. So the Prophet would say it. But this is not min bab. It's not from the angle of in Shab, from the angle of the Prophet saying, I'm going to name it. And the Prophet said, and he prohibited people from doing ta'abidul asma'i li ghayrillah. You're not allowed to say, abd of Ahmed. Or abd of some, no, abd is only for Allah, the slave of Allah. So again, there is an argument of saying, it's not really, the Prophet never confirmed it. The kunya, yes. We use kunya. Then the Abdul Muttalib is not a kunya. It's not a kunya. That's Abu something, yes. Abdul Muttalib is not a kunya. It's his, he's known with. It's the ismu shuhra, they call it. It's the name that he's known as. Again, why the, the Prophet didn't say you're allowed to do it. The Prophet said you're not allowed to do it. But the Prophet used it. Because that's what the other the enemies of, of the Prophet knew Abdul Muttalib. I will stop here for now. Barakallahu fikum. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika. Shadu Allah ilahi lant. Astaghfiru wa tuhu alayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi